Ah, yes. Body positivity. Come here, I'm gonna eat ya! Get in my belly! My favorite modern-day activist slant that's being firmly injected into our media, and really anywhere you look in popular culture, like being attractive or even healthy, is a sin. Movies, games, whatever the medium, it's there. The latest example is the toning down of Mary Jane's looks in the new Spider-Man video game. You know, in an attempt to make her more relatable. No! A character whose canon background is a fucking professional model. It's nearly impossible to find a movie or show without some level of toxically positive crap being preached to you, whether it's about racism. No, I appreciate it. And thanks, brother. We're not racist or I'm not trying to be. You know, I have some flare ups in traffic, but overall, I'm good. <laughs> Body positivity or relationship preferences? I do have a black brother in law. So uh, basically, what I'm saying is uh, my sister is fat. And um... <laughs> you name it, someone's writing a screenplay about it. I guarantee it. <laughs> Hey, 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 what's going on? <laughs> Corporate America is no better than teenagers when it comes to trends. From Tide Pods to DEI requirements, never count out a teenager or a CEO to follow the next idiotic, cool thing to do for clout. Diversity, inclusion, equity. Yes, I just did do DEI. <laughs> Whether it's Megan Fox playing April O'Neil, or a far more uh, diverse and relatable version of April in this year's Ninja Turtles animated film, or controversy surrounding whatever the fuck this is in Fable, they have to put out a public statement acknowledging that they were in breach of contract. And I don't think that's going to be... Oh, Jesus! Hollywood is where trends go to die, and Western culture seems to pivot like Michael Jordan when it comes to reactions. Cultural shifts are always a rapid pendulum swing in the other direction. In response to toxic bully culture, we've pivoted as a society 180 degrees and turned into a culture of toxic positivity. It's the new trendy thing to do, and Hollywood hopped on that train and is staying on until it derails, which it inevitably will. Attractiveness and looking healthy, not supermodel thin, but healthy, is hilariously under criticism and attack because Hollywood wants to push the message of inclusion so that people see themselves on the big screen or YouTube ads. And certain businesses thrive off of beauty. I mean, there's literally a business called the beauty business and also Hollywood, obviously. Attractiveness sells no matter what popular clothing brand is modeling to you. Victoria's Secret recently revealed how the company learned that lesson, with an executive speaking out on how inclusivity and the body positive movement in its marketing was a failure, and they'll be reverting back to what sells, literal supermodels. How dare you! Quote, Despite everyone's best endeavors and some really, really good initiatives, it's not been enough to carry the day. The reality is we all know the performance of the company, and so there must be something that's not going to plan. He's not wrong. The company lost nearly one and a half billion dollars in revenue from the start of its inclusivity movement with plus size models in 2020 to now from 7.5 billion in revenue in 2020 to a predicted six billion in change this year. There's some idiocy in here that could rival this guy. I'm about four, four logos in. <laughs> Instead of having plus size models alongside thin models, they just completely replace them. A perfect example of completing a 180 degree turn instead of finding an actual truly inclusive middle ground if that's your stated goal. Hollywood influences culture and culture influences Hollywood. To talk exclusively about one is to ignore the cause and effect it plays with the other. So as much as I'd like to stick to just critiquing cinematography and plot contrivances and scripts, it's such blatant in-your-face pandering that I absolutely can't ignore it. It's honestly impossible. So fuck it. Let me talk to ya! All right, well, first things first, and maybe the most obvious, the desexualization of the MCU's female heroes. Notice I said female and not just heroes. That was not a mistake, dear viewer, because you'll notice a pattern that it seems to be an almost exclusively female-driven movement pretending to be for everyone. Let me explain. When Scarlett Johansson was hired to play Black Widow in the early years of the MCU, her first role looked a little different than the last time we saw her. In her first on-screen appearance in Iron Man 2, Black Widow was most definitely the femme fatale role and looked the part too. By the time we got to her solo film, Scar Jo's outfit has become completely desexualized along with that aspect of her character. Same goes with Scarlet Witch, 
whose costume in Age of Ultron was slightly more revealing but has since been toned down too. I'm not saying this is good or bad. I mean, if you write a character who's a femme fatale, it does make sense to have her, you know, be that. But other than that, I'm not trying to sound like a guy complaining because I don't get to see some baddies on screen. Funny part about this is, it only seems to apply to the female characters. Last year, one of the major selling points in the trailer for Thor Love and Thunder was Chris Hemsworth getting stripped to his bare ass. Ladies in the comments swooned. Meanwhile, if you dare say ScarJo's hot, you'll be condemned. Man, that got herself a nice little dumper. What did you just say? You heard me. It doesn't end with Chris Hemsworth, either. Even characters not known for their physique have no shirt requirements if they're male. Like Marvel requiring Benedict Cumberbatch to get jacked for his singular shirtless scene waking up from a nightmare in Multiverse of Madness. The hypocrisy looks worse when you consider that Natalie Portman had her muscular arms CGI'd on. Meanwhile, Chris Hemsworth has to shorten his lifespan and project what you would consider truly unrealistic male body standards because there's no way that motherfucker isn't geared to the gills on top of an unreal amount of training and physical pain he has to go through to increase muscle mass and maintain it. Elsewhere, you had Bryce Dallas Howard complaining that the studio dared ask her to lose weight for her role in Jurassic World Dominion. Almost like she was smaller in the previous two films and they were maintaining consistency. The audacity! Meanwhile, her co-star Chris Pratt has to be built like a brick shithouse which requires an unbelievable amount of work and training to accomplish. Examples from all over media have sprung up and are rightfully mocked. Like when they decided to make Velma the dictionary definition of a self-insert character for Mindy Kaling. Because the character looked like, well, Mindy Kaling. <laughs> Thankfully, this show was absolutely pissed on by audiences and probably started a thousand YouTube careers. Yeah, I did it. I went where no one should go. I watched the first two episodes of Velma. <laughs> but that didn't stop HBO from doubling down and greenlighting a season two. Thanks, HBO. I'll make sure to make a video on each episode this time. Oh, sorry I'm not a drunk on the verge of losing custody like every other woman solving murders these days. Fuck you! The summer movie season wrapped up this year, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles return to theaters in the animated reboot, and April went from being portrayed by Megan Fox, who admittedly was pretty miscast. Honestly, she's miscast in anything because she doesn't belong in anything. She's not a good actress. All Earth Realmers will soon know of Eternus. My realm starves, and it's coming here to feed. This is the worst! <laughs> but we went from that to this. <laughs> Movies and television DEI casting and character designs aren't nearly as prevalent as it is in the gaming community, though. Where it seems to happen more frequently with the Fable Hysteria Online honestly making me laugh this year. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, look at this image. So powerful, so relatable. And for games, just like in the movies, the male characters are not altered from the hyper-masculine, roided-out looking superhero physique. While poor Mary Jane even got a downgrade between 2018 to 2023. And I didn't even know about this Disney Plus short film called Reflect until recently. Because it apparently came out last year, but when I learned about it, I was struck by how Disney films are an absolutely perfect corporate display of the evolution of societal approval or disapproval. For example, in WALL-E, released in 2008, the humans were presented as lazy slobs overcome with greed, narcissism, and consumption in every form, from entertainment to food. All of the characters were morbidly obese and either restricted to their floating chairs or chose to stay in one. The message of the dangers of consumerism and self-indulgence was loud and clear. It was an obvious warning regarding Western societies increasing their waist sizes. Fast forward 14 years and Disney releases Reflect, where a character who's obese needs to push through her anxiety caused by her body issues so she can participate in ballet like she wants. If we're talking just from a zoomed out perspective, it's so interesting to me that a person who looked like this was considered a warning for the future 15 years ago, while now in 2023, a person who looks the exact same is being showcased as a virtuous beacon of courage. This sort of thinking doesn't work in the long run because it's just smoke and mirrors. You can't tell someone who's insecure about a legitimate issue, whether they know it is or not, that they're already perfect the way they are. And if they just spoke it out loud enough and believed in themselves hard enough, it'll become reality and the world will conform to them. 
It simply isn't true and is quite literally magical thinking being displayed as a healthy coping mechanism. The message itself is born out of empathy, but like anything, it can be overdone and become its own form of toxicity, which it currently is. Self-actualization without having to put in any effort whatsoever builds a narcissistic culture from an insecure society hell-bent on pretending they're happy with themselves and avoiding the hard work, which catches up to everyone eventually. Some people are born with symmetrical features and are beautiful. Others, genetic gifts of height and strength and are amazing athletes. But those gifts are usually honed. To have that unrealistic body standard, it takes an incredible amount of discipline and hard work to look like that. But to say it's impossible for the average person is blatant victim mentality. Not everyone needs to look like Megan Fox or look like Ronnie fucking Coleman. <laughs> Those are extremes, but suggesting any criticism of morbid obesity being normalized as fat phobic is also an extreme. What a body positive image like the character of Bianca in Reflect fails to do is deliver the other side of the message, the part that requires accountability. No one should hate themselves. It has that part absolutely right. But no one should shy away from wanting to improve their circumstances either, no matter what they are. The story successfully shows her overcoming her insecurity to dance, but wait. She also wishes she could look smaller like the others. Her desire to change her appearance is never addressed and is actually frowned upon as a negative thing. Why? It's presented like her circumstances are completely out of her control, which for the vast majority of people in those circumstances that this kind of character is preaching to, it completely is. Some people are genetically gifted and either have physical attributes that make them stand out when it comes to attractiveness or attributes of athletic prowess. It is what it is. Some people have real medical issues that make them gain and unable to lose weight. This is also absolutely true. But like the genetically gifted, those are rare circumstances. But people who are deemed guilty of projecting unhealthy beauty standards typically don't look that way just because of luck. A lot of hard work and discipline goes into an athlete's ability to stay on the court or field. Or Dwayne The Rock Johnson, an unbelievable amount of discipline and HGH to look like he did in Black Adam. And yeah, when you see a fitness influencer who's jacked as fuck and bald, guess what? He's unhealthy too. It goes both ways. You absolutely shouldn't expect to look like Chris Evans. It's his job to look like Captain America. And it's also long-term unhealthy. Right, Liver King? And I'm here now to set the record straight. Yes, I've done steroids. And yes, I'm on steroids, monitored and managed. But to suggest that morbid obesity is the answer to that and to just leave it at that is insanity. It's a defeatist mentality disguised as virtuous individual bravery. Regression pretending to be progression. But I think it often fails and people reject it because the human spirit is stronger than that. And people want to do better and be better. They just don't know how. And so people end up feeling lost. A character like Bianca does more damage than good because it completely stifles the can-do mentality by putting a concrete ceiling over it. You're good enough, don't progress, don't try and improve, you're already perfect. You just need to realize it. In what discipline in the history of existence is not attempting to better oneself helped anyone succeed in anything ever? How could humanity progress if we said, this is good enough? How is the hypocrisy in the existence of this mentality not obvious to absolutely everybody? Almost everyone deals with insecurity, no matter what they look like or who they are. Margot Robbie was once asked if she felt sexy, and she said she plays characters where she has felt that way. You, me, every other average person in the world, we all feel insecure at times, and yes, that's absolutely valid and probably even reasonable to feel that way a lot of the time. But the message doesn't need to say that's where it ends. There are also things within our control, and a lot of times we can do something about our anxiety-driving situations. We're either just afraid or don't know how. Or both. But just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's not available to you. And to keep balance here, like, I understand. How can you reasonably blame anyone? It's cyclical. Unhealthy food is marketed everywhere and is cheaper than healthy food because it's cheaper to produce in mass quantities. Over 80 years, obesity rates skyrocket and we go from worrying about the future of the Western society if it continues to marketing body positivity. That's capitalism, baby, and it's hard to escape in everyday life.
That's another thing I've always found amusing about this. The demographic that the body positivity movement is aimed at is mostly anti-capitalist. Meanwhile, reality is that body positivity is extremely pro-capitalist because it's suggesting it's totally fine to eat 8,000 calories a day. Spend that money, honey. Just make sure you give it up to Nestle. Healthy at any size is, again, magical thinking. It reminds me of smoking, where societal attitudes have altered greatly in the past few decades, and it's now mostly socially frowned upon to smoke cigarettes. My mom used to smoke. She says that cigarettes kill. Is your mommy a doctor? No. A scientific researcher of some kind? No. Well, she doesn't exactly sound like a credible expert now, does she? Because no, you probably won't get cancer in your 30s, but we know there's a high likelihood of developing it later in life if you never stop. Same goes for obesity and the health risks associated with it. This isn't about plot contrivances or shitty editing in a movie, but it bears repeating that culture is inexorably connected to entertainment. And it's gotten to a point where it's weird to completely ignore the other part of it if you're a commentator on either. An unfortunate reality, but reality nonetheless. There's a better way to push a body positive message. And it includes the second part that takes accountability into consideration. That's a real positive message. Even a cynical ass like me is saying it. Push that, Hollywood. The world would quite literally be better for it. Ladies, if you could just support the WNBA the way you support a f chick that's proud of her body and is no longer a threat to you. Oh my God, you're a goddess. You're gorgeous. You look great in that bikini. I would myself if I looked like that. Keep eating, keep eating.